Another good night's rest. Ready to dive into another day of adventure. What's on the agenda today? That's right. I am meeting Hadrian in front of Mast. I must confess, the hum of a grav drive makes me feel alive. Hi, Sam. So how much of a thrill has it been traveling with the one and only last descendant of the great Solomon Co? Is it everything you imagined? The last Co. What about Cora? And your father? Ain't you ever heard of sarcasm, friend? Okay. So how is it traveling with one of the great Co's? That better? Such an honor. You should see my diary. <laughs> yeah, but no autographs, okay? I gotta say, it's a relief being with you. So many people hear Co and they expect me to pull some miracle out of a hat. Time has a way of just building on itself. Solomon was a good man. Great one, even. But if he ever heard all the bullshit being talked about him these days... He'd flat out deck him. Well then, I want my miracles. It appears I left him in my other jacket. Sorry. But, really, for some people... It ain't a joke. They have serious expectations. Yeah, there, uh, there was a time, well before Cora, where it really weighed on me. I felt like every little thing I did or didn't do was a reflection on our great legacy. It's enough to drive you crazy. Now I just hope I can help Cora to... <laughs> I don't know. Cora's great. You're doing a good job. Your kind words are appreciated. For my father, Cora, and me, everything starts and ends with Solomon Co. He looked out at the stars, and he dreamed a way to get there. Imagine being the first person to jump into a new system, set foot on a new world. Well, I get it. That's powerful stuff. And now... <laughs> I'm just getting sappy. You're a bad influence, you know that? Oh, I have my wiles, Mr. Ko. I believe that might be the most honest thing you've ever said. <laughs> well, I hope the comic book they make about our adventures is better than that rag on Solomon. The stuff they publish is just downright embarrassing. What do you think you're Are doing? you ready to head back out? Around here. Cora will be you thrilled. Know you're wasting Walter's hard-earned credits? I know. Pretty nice to take a load off for a bit, huh? Not sure what Barrett's on about. Oh well, time to head out. Over here. Morning, Hadrian. The workup's in the cabinet's hands. They said they'll call for us once they've gotten to properly review it. But listen, I know I should have been more forthcoming about who I was earlier. So, in the interest of full disclosure, there's one more thing you ought to know before we head up there. My relationship with the UC. It's more complicated than it might seem at first glance. The UC's actually the only reason I'm here in the first place. I... am a clone. Of a man named Francois Sanon. One-time fleet admiral of the UC during the Colony War. Former head of the UC Navy. They called him Ve Victus. Woe to the defeated, in Old Earth Latin. A title he earned. The program I was a part of, it was the UC's attempt to create a new generation of military minds from one of their most respected tacticians. Secure the leadership of the UC military for generations to come. You're a clone? Of a man? How's that work? A non-trivial amount of gene editing. Clone, honestly, isn't even really the right term for our relationship, thanks to the amount of donor material that was required to bring me into this world. He and I are different on more than a few levels, but there's no denying the fact we're inextricably linked. Are there others from your program still out there? Other clones? I'm the last. A few of my siblings, they passed when we were young. Training accidents and the like. But most of the rest were deployed to the front lines during the Colony War. And they never came back. Not a day goes by where I don't think about what the world would look like with them still in it. 
This Vae Victus must have been an impressive commander for the UC to want to clone him. He would have happily told you he was one of the greats. Ultimately, though, it didn't matter. The man I was cloned from, my father, was executed for acts he committed during the war. The man caused a lot of death on both sides. Freestar Collective and UC. Military and civilians. And the things he did, well, they're a part of the reason the UC and Freestar Collective aren't really on great terms to this day. So my involvement, it could be another obstacle they throw at us up there. I just wanted you to be forewarned. You're not your father. If the cabinet doesn't see that, it's their problem, not yours. I, I really appreciate you saying that. I just thought you deserved to know, considering how much you've done already. I certainly understand what a burden unwanted family legacy can be at times. Good or bad. They do find a way of injecting themselves into your lives, don't they? Just our lot, I suppose. You know, while we've got a second, was there anything else we needed to discuss? I know you got dropped into the middle of this pretty fast. Or, if you've got any last-minute business to attend to, now might be a good time. No telling how long the Cabinet's gonna keep us waiting out here. So honestly, what are the risks of us accessing this data? Eye strain from the amount of reading I've got on the horizon if we succeed. The Terramore project never went anywhere. It couldn't. They are deadly creatures, but they aren't Xenoweapons. The Cabinet not opening the archives is probably a bigger risk than them handing over the files. That data itself isn't dangerous. Which probably wouldn't be a bad point for us to bring up, should the opportunity arise. Any suggestion on what I should say to the Cabinet? Well, thinking about it more, I suspect there'd be value in sharing the fact that the Terramorph project was, well, a failure. There's no need to be afraid of this data being weaponized. Knowing that should calm some of the Cabinet's fears and make it easier for us to dispel any suspicions the other factions might have about our intentions. Your eyes. They're red. Is that a result of the cloning process? That's actually a souvenir from my time on Mars. The Red Devils unit I was a part of, they were founded by recruits who'd worked some of Mars' deepest mines. Folks used to adversity. The dust at those depths, it seeps into everything. The human eye included. Where the name Red Devils came from in the first place. It became an unwritten rite of passage that anyone wanting to enlist with the Devils had to do a stint in the mines before they could join up. The Devils were always talked about in such revered tones during my training, so as soon as I was old enough, I signed up, and the eyes were my parting gift. Are you willing to tell me any more about your father? I mean, we never spent a lot of time together. He was too busy being Fleet Admiral to deal with kids. I was raised by a pair of Guardians instead. Until his defeat during the Colony War, though, he was known as an extremely effective commander. Savvy. Perceptive. That mind opened a lot of doors for him. And for me, too. But Ve Victus, for all his ability, was heartless. Ruthless to a fault. In the end, that's what cost him his life. I don't have any more questions. Then I guess it's just a matter of... My cabinet meeting is about to begin. All parties, please proceed to the cabinet chambers. Sounds like our cue. Here we go. Gonna meet some of the most influential individuals in the UC. I am not nervous at all. There they are. Ah, welcome. You must be the captain Hadrian mentioned in her report. You have our thanks for the risks you faced in securing this information. 
Hadrian made it clear that addressing this issue required the utmost urgency. Oh, I'm sure she did. Yes, well, precisely how urgent is what I hope we'll determine here today. So now, we have two petitioners here making a surprising request. Access to the UC Xeno Warfare team's Terramorph data, currently housed in the Armistice Archives. A request which will require not just this body's agreement, but that of all three Armistice signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, Captain, we've all read Hadrian's report on the subject, but we have yet to hear from you. Perhaps you could summarize for the Cabinet what it is you see as the goal of this endeavor. We need the archival data to find a way to stop a possible Terramorph apocalypse. That's quite the leap, Captain. Madam President, I object to the very premise of this meeting. While no one would argue that what happened on Tau Ceti was anything less than a tragedy, Terramorph attacks are not some sudden new threat on the horizon. They've been happening for generations. To demand, we hand over banned archival knowledge and possibly upset the balance of galactic diplomacy because of a single attack. Seems at best panic. And at worst, a power grab by the daughter of a bloodthirsty warmonger and her associates. I would remind the chief diplomat who he's speaking to. If it's my father you're looking to address, you're welcome to consult a medium. I would also ask, how many deaths the cabinet requires to act? Fifty? Fifty thousand? Because if tragedies like Tau Ceti are just prelude to more attacks, I have no doubt you'll get the body count you require. Let's keep this civil, shall we? And while there should be no doubt, the preservation of life stands paramount among this body's duties. Chief Essene has a point. Will a single attack, however troubling, be sufficient to convince the other factions to grant us access to what they no doubt consider weapon data? I don't think it's enough. Perhaps you can help, Captain. As the one who actually collected the sample in question, did this Terramorph seem at all alarming to you? It wiped out a colony that never saw it coming. That's pretty alarming. That is worth considering. This attack took place on an almost completely uninhabited world. The casualties were minimal as a result. But if there's another attack, will we be so lucky? Hmm. Yes, a fine point, Admiral. So then, Captain, given the discussion now and the information you've been privy to thus far, if you were in our position, would you grant the request made to open the archives? If there's a chance what happened on Tau Ceti could happen elsewhere, we need to grant the request. If the stakes weren't so high, we wouldn't be asking. But, well, we're asking. I'm inclined to agree. As am I. Uh... I suppose that does get to the heart of the point, doesn't it? Very well. I consent. The galaxy was lucky you were here today, Captain. You and I are in agreement, Chief Diplomat. So, if there are no other objections, I believe we can agree to give our full backing to make the request to... What was that? Incident. Chief Sarkin, what's happening? There's been an attack at the spaceport. Terramorphs. Terramorphs? More attacks. Just as predicted. Good God. Uh, Holy, we need to move. There. There must be another explanation. The creatures evaded our scanner somehow. There will be plenty of time for conjecture. Later. Chief Sarkin, order the evacuation of the spaceport and have your men contain the things, but do it discreetly. The last thing we need is a citywide panic. Yes, ma'am. Admiral Logan, the local barracks can provide support? I'll make the order myself. The nearest anti Xeno squad, though, is off world. It's going to take a while to bring them in. Well then, we'll have to make do with the tools we've got. You two. We can't risk those things getting out of the spaceports. I want you both on the next train there. We'll let them know you're coming, and that you've dealt with these things before. 
Now go show them how it's done. We're on it, ma'am. Captain, I'm right behind you. Let's get down there. Yeah, let's go. Terror marks in the city. How is this possible? Hey, are you all right? Thank you for what you did. We didn't, we didn't want to hurt them. The way those people were acting, I've seen this before. They were under the Terramorph's influence, weren't they? I, I don't know. They were down at the port and they just started screaming. We tried to restrain them, get them on the train to get them out of harm's way, but but some of the other officers down there. We couldn't restrain them fast enough. They just started firing on us. People we knew. They went berserk. Thermonic projection. Some Terramorphs, they can induce this fog. It affects everyone differently, but some people just lose control, turn against everyone around them, even if they don't want to. They're like a puppet. You kill the morph, you break the hold. But this means we're going to need to be real careful with our fire and keep that EM weapon at the ready. Are you suggesting terramorphs can control someone's mind? I'm not suggesting. It's documented behavior. The result of the projection, though, can vary wildly. Some folks just shrug it off. Others hallucinate. And some lose control altogether. They'll lash out at anyone around them, but still be aware while they're doing it. Those cases, you'll either need to knock them out with EM fire, or free them by killing the Terramorph. So does that mean I need to worry about you turning on me? I honestly was just wondering the same thing. But no, you don't need to worry about me. I've had a Terramorph try it on me before. I'm not susceptible. So we'll just have to make sure to watch out for each other down there. Sounds like we need to hustle. Let's do it. Matt's unlocked. Please, do what you can to help them. I will do my best. I don't think we're alone. Oh God, no time to waste, Captain. Stash the EM and pull some firepower. Let's move! An evacuation order has been issued for the spaceport district. Not real. All citizens are required to proceed to the nearest shelter. One down. Hot egg spots. We've got the remaining creatures locked down on the landing pad, barely holding our perimeter. They said you've done this before. Well, one fire team to spare and whatever supplies you need, but I can't risk them taking over any more of my men. Put those things down and do it fast. Hold them as best we can. You 
the fire team leader. Heard you might be looking for some backup. You say the word, we're out there on your six. You two have any experience with Terramorphs before? Only the brief they just gave on the way here. But we know how to handle pressure. Surviving a full-on mental assault isn't the same as keeping your cool in a firefight. Might make you more liability than asset. We're not UC security. You don't need to worry about us. And you're sure you're not going to turn on us out there? We're not afraid. But we'll stay here and hold the line if that's what you want. You're the experts. I want you watching our backs. Roger that. We're on you. Anyone nosing around here has got to have a death wish. Welcome back to the pride and joy of the UC. Hello, I'll be with my descent. Two o'clock. Damn if I'm not proud of it, though. Sergeant. Thank the heavens you're back in one piece. Well, I guess our people weren't so lucky. Their sacrifice wasn't in vain. The city's safe now. The few protecting the many. And it would have been plenty more if it hadn't been for the two of you. The city owes you both a debt after this. We were just in the right place at the right time. Captain, we should report back to the President. Let her know the Terramorphs have been dealt with. Take care of yourself, Sergeant. Three Terramorphs suddenly showed up in the city. We have to get to the bottom of this. Thankfully, it appears that most of the damage occurred outside. The city should be back to normal fairly quickly. Your people all know how much we owe them today. Yes, ma'am. Ah, there you are. I believe we have some things we should discuss. The next time Terramorphs rear their ugly heads, the UC is going to be ready. Captain? Hadrian? It would appear that the Cabinet owes you our thanks for what you did for the city today. As well as an apology. Your concerns about the Terramorphs will consider them validated. Thank you, ma'am. Agreed. Thank you. Of course. I only wish we could have acted sooner. Now, today's events have only clarified our path forward in the eyes of the Cabinet. You will have our full support in collecting the Terramorph data from the Archives, as well as a subsequent investigation into the nature of these attacks. But to accomplish those goals, we're going to need the right people in the right places. As such, the Cabinet has authorized me to reinstate you, Hadrian, effective immediately, to your former rank of Major. As soon as we've got the data in hand, we want you investigating these attacks and how to stop them. Will you do this? I... Y yes Yes, ma'am. I'd be honored. Excellent. 
But as you've both made clear, for such an investigation to succeed first, we're going to need someone to convince the Free Star Collective and House Varun to play ball. Someone who knows precisely the sorts of dangers the colonies and all the galaxy are facing right now. The Cabinet wants you, Captain, to be that representative. Me? Why not send a diplomat? Someone trained for this sort of thing. The Cabinet wants progress, and wants it quickly. You're already far more familiar with the situation than any diplomat would be. There's also no diplomat alive that can claim they helped keep a cadre of terramorphs off the Embassy doorsteps. The Cabinet was unanimous. They want you. If you're sure that's the wisest course of action. We do. In exchange, we're willing to fast track your citizenship upon collection of the data. So, will you help us? You can count on me, ma'am. I'm glad to hear it. Now, we of course won't be sending you in without the proper support. Deputy McIntyre in the Office of Interstellar Affairs will be your guide on gaining access to the archives. You should be able to find her in her office across the hall. And on behalf of the whole of the United Colonies, you have our thanks. We are dismissed. You've got the capital. Full backing to prevent more attacks. Understand? I'm gonna go check in with Chief Engineer Kulkarni. Start getting a plan together for that data. All right, I'll see you later. Hey. Hi, I was told to see you. That must make you my vanguard captain. Welcome to Interstellar Affairs. I'm Deputy Chief Diplomat McIntyre, Chief Yassine's second in command. I heard you were instrumental in protecting the city from the attack. You have my gratitude. I was also informed that you gave quite the presentation to the cabinet. Chief Yassine wants you to know the Interstellar Affairs Office is fully committed to this endeavor, accessing the Terramorph data and beyond. We're going to do everything in our power to make sure you have the tools you need. And that means first getting you into the Archives. You do know what the Archives are, correct? They're the repositories for all the banned data from the Colony War. Hmm. Someone paid attention in current events. So, then you also know that it was originally managed by the three major galactic players. Access to the Archives is only granted in cases of dire emergency and requires a one-time use code from each of the three Armistice signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, the UC is already on board, so that means we'll need to convince two people, the ambassadors of the Freestar Collective and House Varun, to hand over their codes. Get them both and you'll have your data. But that's a lot easier said than done. What can you tell me about these codes? Can we forge them? No. Each is a strip of several million random numbers generated on the fly based on biometric keys kept by each of the ambassadors on their person at all times. They're impossible to create without those keys, and those keys stay with the ambassadors, meaning we're accessing nothing if we can't get them on our side. You'd think they'd be clamoring to help after the spaceport attack. I couldn't agree more. However, both ambassadors have reasons they won't, or can't, work with us. Now, I'll provide guidance on how we believe you can acquire each code, but ultimately, it'll be up to you to get them both to cooperate. And I do mean cooperate. Threats and violence are off the table here. Though that doesn't mean we can't get creative. But it does mean we need to get you up to speed on who you're dealing with. Who do you want to start with? Ambassador Radcliffe of Freestar? or Ambassador Balmore of House Varun. Tell me about Ambassador Radcliffe of the Free Star Collective. Ah, <sighs> the good Ambassador Radcliffe. She's a veteran of the Colony War, and her only goal in life is to make ours miserable. Well then, hope she's doing a good job. 
Now, officially, our office is suggesting you try and negotiate with her. Use your experiences as a member of the military and with the threat we're facing to convince her to lend her support. And who knows? Maybe that'll work. Stranger things have happened. But my suspicion is we're going to have to rely on other tools to get her code. I think you're underestimating how delightful I am. Huh. Well, if that's the case, I'll wait to be pleasantly surprised. But we do have one item up our sleeve. UC Intelligence has a recording device planted in the Ambassador's living quarters, which we suspect you can use to your advantage. But getting caught trespassing is a quick way to land yourself in an embassy holding cell. So, if you are going to try and access the device, you're going to need to find a way in there without being seen. Now, we recovered some intel we believe should be able to help with that. But there's also a disgruntled staff member you might be able to pump for information. Maybe even convinced to work with you. What can you tell me about this staff member? Name's Cameron Long. He's younger than Ratcliffe, bears less of a grudge towards the UC. He works closely with the Ambassador, making him a promising source for information on the ins and outs of Embassy life, and someone who very likely hates her guts. Any other things I should avoid doing inside the Embassy? Yes, many. Don't steal anything. Don't get caught anywhere you're not supposed to. Absolutely do not harm anyone. If something goes wrong, we'll do our best to smooth things over, but I can't make any promises. That's all the info I need for the moment on Ambassador Radcliffe. All right. Here, your diplomatic ID. I'll give them a heads up, you're on your way. Not likely to let you through the door otherwise. And take these. Chief Yassin wanted you to have some options on how to proceed in there. Tell me about Ambassador Balmore of House Varun. Ambassador Balmore's... a challenge. When the rest of House Varun retreated into seclusion shortly after the signing of the Armistice, Balmore stayed here. He's since lent his support to a small number of archival requests, so there's real hope he might again. Though claiming to know how a member of House Varun thinks is a quick way to earn yourself a psych eval. Why? What's wrong with House Varun? Well, these days, they're primarily considered a security threat. House Varun Zealots, a fundamentalist outshoot of the group that stayed behind when the rest retreated into seclusion, want nothing more than to send everyone not dedicated to their cause to the Great Serpent in the Sky. But that hasn't always been the case. After they ended the Serpent's Crusade about 70 years back, House Varun did take a real run at trying to normalize relations with the rest of the galaxy. It's why they have an embassy here in the first place, why they were included in the armistice negotiations. But then, without warning, they left, leaving behind, to our knowledge, just the ambassador and his duty under the armistice. I'm sure he can be reasoned with. House Varun are people just like us. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Of course, but there is another wrinkle. We're not 100% sure Balmore is actually still alive. His public appearances were always rare, but it's been several years now since he last poked his head out. Scans of the facility show life signs, but not the kind we were expecting. Your task is to find him and kindly but firmly remind him of his duties under the armistice. What kind of life signs did you detect in the Embassy? The Varun delegation brought more than a few of their native flora with them when they set up in the Embassy. It seems those plants have been allowed to flourish, making it hard for us to verify what's flora and what's Ambassador. Wait, has no one actually been inside the Embassy? The Embassy is still legally House Varun's sovereign territory, so we're not technically permitted inside. We've snuck in the occasional spy, of course, but the Ambassador has proven more evasive than you'd expect for a man of his age. But we're quite sure he hasn't left the city. The man stands out. Here's hoping we're not chasing a corpse. 
It would at least be a speedier negotiation. But I, of course, hope the Ambassador is alive and well. Now, the Embassy front door isn't an option, but our spies have stated there's a side entrance that should allow you access. Here. This device should get you all the way down to the Embassy interior. Once you're inside, though, finding the Ambassador is going to be up to you. And fair warning, we received a report that alarms might have been tripped inside the Embassy during the attacks. Watch out for automated security in there. Now, if you have additional questions or require clearance for a new approach we haven't already discussed, don't hesitate to ask. I'd suggest you start with Ambassador Radcliffe. Approach her while the attack is still fresh in her and her staff's mind. Be smart out there, Captain. You can count on me.